This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We have got a fun matchup between Texas and Alabama coming up this week across college football. We're going to break down not only that game, but also other big games across week two and the favorite bets from Dr. Ed Fang over at FanDuel Sportsbook for this week. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a managing editor of digital media for FanDuel Research. Joined here, as mentioned, by Dr. Ed Fang. You can find his work over at thepowerrank.com. Check him out on Twitter at the Power Rank as well. Ed, it is week two in college football and week one in the NFL. So how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Trying to uh, get everything settled with both college football and the NFL. It's been a busy week, but uh, it's really nice to have college football. And then obviously pretty big game tomorrow night as well. Yeah, and I've been spending the entire week getting my spreadsheets ready for the NFL, trying to get that done. Honestly, it's kind of like... Uh, First day of school when you're like organizing your highlighters. I'm not sure if you ever did this, but like organizing your highlighters, they're arranged in like color order and stuff like that. That's what it's like for me getting my spreadsheets ready is like organizing everything. You like kind of get that like extra little bolt of juice when you do that. So like I've honestly, even though it's like a tiring week and a kind of a stressful week, it's still really fun at the same time. Yeah, it is really fun. Are, are you you have your spreadsheets ready for DFS or what 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 specifically? betting dfs i have uh got my totals model ready to cook inputting wind speeds and stuff like that that's done that's ready to go uh obviously the betting model which i've had for a couple years i have like a an upside model for dfs i'm tinkering with trying to identify like best game environments and stuff like that so we're working out a lot of stuff um will it be good who can say i won't know until week 18 but like i think it's uh i think we're on the right path here so i feel i feel like more prepared than i have in years past at least that's good yeah so we'll see how it goes so today we're going to talk about uh college football week number two talking about the week's biggest games breaking down what ed's thoughts are on those games and much more but first a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to covering the spread wherever you get your podcast special little treat coming up here on the podcast feed today but also every every week uh, on wednesday or thursday morning we're gonna have tom vecchio he's gonna preview thursday night football for that week primetime tom is what we're calling that little offshoot of covering the spread that podcast will be up on the covering the spread podcast feed along with FanDuel tv plus no youtube for that one but this one and the NFL full week preview with myself and Ed will be up on the FanDuel YouTube page along with FanDuel TV Plus and Covering the Spread. To get all those shows as they're posted, just make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread, the FanDuel YouTube page, and FanDuel TV Plus. Check out that uh, by going to FanDuel.com slash watch or downloading the app on Fan or on Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire devices the nfl is back and the best place to celebrate is on fanduel because right now all customers can get a no sweat bet for week one just place a bet on any week one nfl game you'll get bonus bets back if you're if your bet does not win, bet on spreads, player props, totals, and more. So visit the FanDuel Sportsbook app and kick off the NFL season with America's number one sportsbook. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. Refund issued is non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Max refund $5 unless otherwise specified. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. FanDuel is offering online sports waging in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Colorado, Iowa, Michigan, New Jersey, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Tennessee, and Virginia. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342 in Arizona, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat in Connecticut. 1-800-9-WITH-IT in Indiana, 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghealth.com in Kansas, 1-877-770-STOP in Louisiana, mdgamblinghealth.org in Maryland, 1-800-GAMBLER.NET in West Virginia, call 1-800-522-4700 in Wyoming, hope is here, visit gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support in Massachusetts or call 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and Y. In New York. Now we'll dig into some of the big games across week number two here in just one second, Ed. But first, 
want to talk to you about your model because you mentioned entering week zero that there will be situations where your model moves dramatically with new data. And we did see some teams that outperformed the market in a big way in week one, like Colorado, obviously, but also Texas State. So well, how much are you are you able to adjust? How much does the model adjust when teams like that outperform expectations so dramatically in the opening game of the year? It adjusts a lot. Colorado got moved up three or more points. Uh, I think that is probably accurate, although we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Uh, it was even a little bit more with Texas State. The model is aggressive. I think you need to figure out when that aggression is warranted and then maybe when it's not. Uh, I was kind of off when, um, you know, moving on Hawaii uh, and having Stanford, uh, you know, taking them what plus three and a half against Stanford. That didn't that didn't really work out. Um, so. The model is going to be aggressive. Whether you choose to follow that or not is is kind of the handicapping process. Uh, we'll talk about a couple, of, uh, you know, what the model says in a couple of games compared to the preseason expectations. There, you know, there's clearly cases in which the market's been like, all right, we're not gonna we're not gonna put too much stock in that first game. Um, we're just gonna pretty much go with what the preseason prior was, no matter what we saw in that game. And uh, we'll go from there. So if you see something different, if you see something that uh, really kind of stands out to you, then then I would go with the aggression. But it, it's really like it's really, you know, I mean, that's kind of the art of handicapping. Right. The model says it is going to be aggressive and it's going to move. And and it's my job to figure out uh, when that's appropriate and when it's not. Now, with those two teams specifically, there was un like unmeasurable amounts of turnover from year to year. So they entered the year as kind of being like the most volatile teams as a result of that. So does that make you put more stock in your model, the aggressive model, knowing that it's going to react quickly to those things? Or does it make you a bit more skeptical of the model because there are such edge cases that maybe that it's not going to be aggressive enough with, with teams as dramatic as those two? I mean, it's hard to say. It's well, it's a kind of a case by case basis, right? Like Colorado's offense was awesome; their defense, honestly, not so much. Right. Uh, so you know, you got to kind of parse that out. Uh, you have to put in the context that I kind of thought TCU was overrated coming into the season. Something I wrote about in my newsletter. Uh, so that kind of plays uh, a factor in there, and then. You know, I mean, we'll get back to Colorado, Nebraska later, but I mean, essentially the the markets moved like 10 points on that game. Yeah, that's a lot. The market has moved essentially zero points in, in a couple of these other games that we're going to talk about. So I understand kind of what they're saying with with uh, with Colorado. But, you know, I mean, it, I, I definitely believe in what Dion's doing and I'm really happy for them. And I was certainly cheering for them Saturday. Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun. But and and I can see the reason why you would make such a drastic shift, um, but I'm not sure that that much is is warranted. We'll talk about that game later on as you tease. But let's start things off here by talking about Notre Dame at NC State, where right now Notre Dame is a seven point favorite. Total in this game is fifty and a half. And obviously, you talked about Notre Dame against Navy, and in that game, they lived up to and exceeded expectations. You had high expectations from them to begin with, and then they exceeded that. So. What kind of a ceiling does Notre Dame have if they can keep the offense clicking the way it was against that Navy team? I mean, certainly pretty, pretty high ceiling. Uh, you know, my model has this at Notre Dame uh, about seven and a half points. And look, Notre Dame has been what we thought they could be bringing in a really high profile quarterback transfer in Sam Hartman. They have exceeded 10 yards for pass attempt in both their games. Look, not exactly the most difficult competition in the world, um, but 60% passing success rate in both games. Also pretty good. Um, obviously going to get a little bit more of a test here with uh, – is this officially considered a conference game? I don't even know. <laughs> They're playing an ACC opponent, uh, and we're going to we're gonna learn a little bit more, right? Um, you know, the North, Notre Dame defense really hasn't been challenged. That should probably change a little bit against North Carolina State and, and Brennan Armstrong. Um it should be more of a test. My model doesn't really have much of an edge here. I would certainly lean towards Notre Dame because I do feel like there is upside with Sam Hartman, with the Marcus Freeman team. The defense should be good and probably better than it was in his first year last year. Uh, so I would definitely lean that way. But um, but the model doesn't really have the, not showing too much of an edge. 
Especially because you've got a seven and a half. The minus seven at, at FanDuel Sportsbook, at least, is minus 118. So that's kind of pretty much in line with what your numbers have. It, it sounds like it's a very efficient market there. So I think that it, it even further increases the incentive to view this one as being a stay away. Notre Dame and NC State, despite the fact we think that this offense could have upside, makes sense to uh, respect the fact that the market also agrees with that assessment. Let's talk now about Texas A&M taking on Miami. Also a Saturday game where right now Texas A&M, four and a half point favorite on the road, taking on Miami. Total for this game is 51 and a half. And look at this game, Ed. Both these teams cruise to victory in week one. So can Miami keep this one close, potentially cover here? Or what's your thoughts on this game? Right. I mean, I think those victories in week one were very different. Uh, the Texas A&M one was probably a little bit misleading. I, I think they did cover the th- well, they were favored by 38. Uh, but when you look at the underlying metrics, that didn't really justify uh, being a 38 point favorite. So, for example, they had about 42.9 percent success rate. Texas A&M uh, versus 37 uh, for New Mexico. So they were the better team, but probably not 38 point bet- 38 points better. Uh, my model certainly adjusted for that. It was different for Miami of Florida. Uh, they were 16 and a half point favorite, and uh, they almost doubled up in success rate over Miami of Ohio. Uh, Miami of Florida had 51.6% success rate versus 26 and a half for Miami of Ohio. So they certainly kind of did justify their metrics. Um, before week one, my numbers would have made Texas a and about a five and a half point favorite on the road here. And that's basically in line with the markets, but it's about a point off. Um, and right now with the aggressive changes, uh, it only has a and about a, by about a half point. Wow. Um, I'm not quite. Yeah. I mean, so, so basically if you want to follow the model, you're buying into a Miami team that was kind of terrible last year in the first year with Mario Cristobal. Um, the quarterback Van Dyke wasn't particularly good. So they had a good game against Miami of Ohio. The markets are saying, eh, I don't really care. Uh, on the other hand, Texas A&M, are they really that much worse uh, with one game against New Mexico? Markets so far are saying no. Um, I think there's a lot of questions about both teams. Um, I don't think we can make too much of a, a statement about these teams right now. So, I mean, this is definitely a stay away from me. Uh, and again, an example where the market has said, eh, we're going to kind of forget about last week. We're giving, we're giving the Aggies a pass because, because we do think that they, they can live up to, uh, what they're doing, you know, what we expected them to do preseason. Um, so yeah, just markedly different behavior than, than other games. Now, it sounds like this is a spot where you do disagree with the model, where the model is making big adjustments on Miami of Florida, and it sounds like right. you want to pump the brakes a bit more. So I always find that intriguing, the spots where you are saying, I disagree with the model here. What leads you to not fully buy into what the model is saying with regards to the movement on this game? Yeah, I mean, it's more uh, the downgrade of Texas A&M than any upgrade yeah. of Miami of Florida. And I think with Texas A&M, you know, you have a five-star quarterback and kind of Wegman. You bring in Bobby Petrino to, to be there on the offense. Um, you know, they weren't particularly great, but, you know, let's give them another look there. The defense probably should be – has been really good at Texas A&M over the past couple of years. They, they should continue to be good. That didn't necessarily show itself against New Mexico, but they get a pass. Um, I guess they get a pass. I, I, I guess, I mean, personally, even in looking at these three games that we're going to talk about, like I'm least interested in this game. I think the market is right to be. Um, I would definitely lean, you know, for example, I would lean harder towards Notre Dame in the last one, even though my model didn't say there was much of an edge. I would lean harder towards Notre Dame there than having any opinion in this game. All right, let's finish up then by talking about Texas at Alabama and Pretty fun game last year in this one. And right now, Alabama, a seven-point favorite with the total at 54 and a half at FanDuel Sportsbook. And, you know, both these teams did win pretty comfortably in week number one. So how do you see things playing out here in the rematch between Texas and Alabama? Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, the numbers really didn't like what Texas did against uh, little brother Rice down down there. Uh, you know, they had 39% success rate versus 26 and a half for Rice. That probably doesn't justify, the, you know, the big uh, the big point spread. Um, and on the other hand, you know, like I, I don't I'm not I think we've come into the season with more questions about Alabama than we have probably since Nick Saban's second year down there. And they did a really good job uh, against Middle Tennessee. Really did pound them pretty good. 
uh, Jalen Milrow. Uh, I don't, I'm not, I don't know if he was ever officially named the starter quarterback. That was something I was kind of following. I think it was week. Saturday morning or Friday night is when that first alert came out that he would be the starter. Yeah. So he, you know, they, they, they certainly weren't confident in him, but he goes out there has almost 54% passing success rate, which is pretty good compared to the college football average of 41%. Um, interestingly, this is not, I don't know. I mean, usually Bama gets the edge. Uh, I would have made this about seven and a half before the season started. Uh, I make it Bama by nine right now. So the market is actually saying, eh, we're not giving Bama the edge quite yet. Uh, here's where I don't, I don't really particularly love this game, but I was certainly lean towards Alabama and the model here. Um, you you kind of have to remember Texas was like really good last year by the underlying metrics. They were top 10, 15 on both offense and defense. That was, you know, much better than kind of the awful first year that Sark had uh, the year before when he first got to Texas, Texas was one and five, uh, sorry, two and five and one score games last year, which is, which is why it didn't really kind of show up on the, uh, in their record, uh, how good they were. Um, you know, not, not a great performance by uh, against rice, but I feel like, uh, you know, the markets are giving them a pass on that. Um yeah, so you know to have this at seven right now, when you wouldn't, when I would have made it seven and a half in the preseason, yeah, I would lean towards Alabama in this game. Now you're saying that I think intentionally, saying it's a lean versus something you'd want to bet because the minus seven is minus one fourteen. I'm assuming that based on the way you're talking, this is not when you've actually bet yourself yet. It sounds like you're you're more willing to make it a stay away and be a bit more skeptical because the market is also a bit light in Alabama right. Yeah, for sure. I think Alabama has some issues in the secondary, which m- might matter in against the Texas team that's got some pretty good wide receivers. A Texas team that you know Quinn Ewers is is uh, at least considered a quarterback with a high ceiling. Um, so, kind of forgot about that when I was writing all my notes. Yeah, they they have some injury issues there too. So, yeah, definitely leans toward Notre Dame and Alabama, but you know, as you said, not, nothing I've bet yet. Okay, well, let's open up the board then and talk about other games you like across week number two. Ed, where else you seeing value right now at FanDuel Sportsbook? I mean, I hate to do this, but we got we got to talk about this Colorado and Nebraska game. So Nebraska goes into week one and uh, they have a late lead at Minnesota and give up 10 points in like the last three minutes to lose. And uh, it, it's it's just a colossally awful start for Matt Rule at Nebraska, um, you know, a program that hasn't really been good since the 90s and they kind of want to be good. And, and and Matt Rule is about as good of a hire as you can make. Uh, did some remarkable turnaround jobs at both Temple and, and Baylor. And so it's just an awful way to start. Um, you know, they're, you know, actually uh, the model made a pretty – pretty big upgrade on uh nebraska in that game against minnesota so uh you know part of that game was they were also minus minus three in turnovers Uh, they actually got upgraded after that game colorado clearly got upgraded after you know being a 21 point underdog at tcu uh they played really well um yeah travis hunter is kind of unbelievable the wide receiver cornerback combination um so, uh, but as I said, uh, you know, the, the Colorado defense wasn't particularly good. They gave a pretty high success rate against TCU. And it's also like how they gave it up. Like they allowed about a 51% success rate rushing wise against TCU because Travis Hunter plays a less of a role against the run. I don't know if you remember, he also dropped, he had an interception, but he dropped one too. And you're like, dude, what, what are you doing? <laughs> like, You're a wide um, receiver. <laughs> right, exactly. And uh, you know, I, I don't make too much of this, but Nebraska was actually pretty good running the ball uh, against Minnesota. They had about a 53% success rate there. They have the quarterback, Jeff Sims, out of Georgia Tech that, uh, you know, ran the ball a bunch in that game. So I think some of the matchups kind of match up here. And like I said, uh, you know, it's about a 10-point swing. Um, I think once Colorado beat TCU, they, you knew they were going to be favored in this game. You knew the markets were kind of shit going to shift and i kind of understand that uh but you know when you would have i i would have made nebraska about a seven point favorite on the road here so that's what we expected before last week now colorado is a three-point favorite i definitely think there's value i i 
look, this is definitely a game where you you uh, you you're going to look really silly if it doesn't go your way, because I can certainly imagine situations where Colo- Colorado wins this game. But I think a lot of like the underlying factors point to like this is too much of a of a shift. I'm I'm okay with a little bit of a shift, but I think I, I think it's I think it's too much. Um, uh, the only question is whether I think this is going to go from three to three and a half in some places. There's some like smaller books that I don't have accounts at that are at three and a half. I really don't think the sharp money is going to come in on Colorado. I think all the public money is going to come in on Colorado. So I guess I'm debating in my mind whether I think I can bet this at three and a half before kickoff uh, to get a better number than three. FanDuel is at two and a half, probably a better spot. Um So I do think there's value with Nebraska. I think, uh, you know, everyone in the public is on Colorado, and I get it. But uh, I think the value is on the other side. Yeah, right now, as you mentioned, FanDuel is currently uh, Nebraska plus two and a half. That is plus 102, though. Uh, So you're getting a bit of a a discount there in that regard. But let's say, Ed, we get a three and a half because we do see a lot of movement in college football on Saturday mornings now. If it were to get to three and a half, would that be a situation where you'd be kind of like slobbering at that point? Because I know that you, like you said, you uh, want to respect Colorado and what they've done. How enticing would a three and a half be for you? Yeah, I would bet Nebraska plus three and a half if I can, if I can get it for yeah. sure. Okay. So, so Colorado. We'll I, yeah. I'm not sure. I, there's part of me that thought I was going to get it, but, but it was up I, there I briefly. Don't... I thought on Sunday uh, and it was gone real fast, but it was up there, I think, for a second. I, I just don't feel like a lot of the sharp groups are going to be pounding Colorado on this. I think it's right. more of a public thing. Right. Exactly. I may be wrong. Maybe. We'll see. It's been a weird market to track. Uh, it's been exciting to track, honestly. It's been the most, I think that they were saying it was tracking to be like the most bet college football game in a long time, uh, potentially like ever on regulated books. So it's going to yeah, be fun regardless. But that it's also means there's going to be a lot of money coming in still, despite the fact we're already at Wednesday on this game. Right. But, okay, so so here's the thing. I mean, if this is really like the Super Bowl of college football going on, right, is it something where the markets are going to react to all that public money and go to three and a half just so they can kind of cover? Oh, hey, and there. It the just came down. Away. <laughs> it just went away. Oh, okay, it came now. back up at two and a half. The exact same as always before, but like I, they're clearly taking money on this game right now. They're uh, they're clearly taking money. Well, the market—I mean, that's the exact same market, right? So, yeah, doesn't look like it's uh, doesn't look like it's changed. Um, I'm actually really happy for Deion Sanders. I, I really yeah. like what he's done, and I really like that uh, he shot back at some of his critics already. But he should also be prepared for the fact that he's not going to go 15 and 0 this season, no. and so some of that's going to come back at him at some point this season. It might not be this week. Uh, it might be a little bit later. But um, but yeah, it's 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 a uh, it's a great story, you know. Like it's it's one of the, like I was really looking forward to watching Colorado games coming into the season, and now and now everyone's on that, and it, and it's fun. It's a good story, and it, and it's good for college football, and it's good for betting. Right. We love college football. We want more people talking about college football, watching college football, betting college football. And this is obviously helping that. So it's a fun storyline. They're a fun team to watch too. Like that shouldn't go overlooked. Like it's not just a fun storyline. Like it's objectively a fun team to watch too, at least based based on one week. So I feel like, uh, it's kind of a, an interesting time. So we'll see how that one plays out. But Ed, saying the model does show value in Nebraska. So keep an eye on that market, whether you want to bet it now or bet it potentially on Saturday, something like that. If you see the market move to three and a half, buy it then. Pretty enticing spot regardless with Nebraska taking on Colorado. That is all that we have here for today on covering the spread. But as mentioned, we do have uh, primetime Tom previewing Thursday Night Football between the Lions and the Chiefs coming up later on. Also back with Ed once again tomorrow talking about some NFL for week number one. Ed, you mentioned your numbers um, and how they react. We're going to find those numbers if they want to see them on your site. For sure. Members of my site have access to all those numbers, how the, you know, my, my best college football reacts. Um, I also offer a lot of free stuff in my newsletter. You can check that out at the power Uh, do sign up for the newsletter. Uh, there's a discount code that you can take advantage of before the NFL game starts on Thursday, Detroit at Kansas city. So check that out at the power 
All righty. Find Ed on Twitter as well at the Power Rank. Check out his podcast, the Football Analytics Show, and uh, check out the PowerRank.com for all of that great info. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J I M S A N N E S. You can also follow FanDuel Research at FanDuel Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you if you're betting anything for Wednesday night. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down NFL week number one. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 